Hello and welcome. In the next few lectures, we will discuss topic from graph theory. Graph theory is one of the most popular areas in combinatorics. One of the main reasons it is so popular is that it is very easy to convey the ideas of uh, a graph theory question uh, and explain it to uh, a person who is not an expert in that area. But even more importantly, it is uh, popular because it has a wide range of applications in uh, many areas, especially uh, topics from computer science, biotechnology, uh, chemistry, uh, engineering branches, and, and several other topics. This is because uh, graphs, as we'll define soon, are uh, uh, representing uh, relations between pairs of objects. And uh, it is a way uh, to visualize uh, the relations uh, in a, a nice way so that uh, one can one can see uh, what is happening uh, just uh, in a pictorial manner. This is, uh, uh, you know, one of the main uh, reasons like uh, the, the, the area became popular. And uh, uh, we will see uh, uh, what uh, this is about. We will look at some of the basic results uh, and notions and uh, some few important theorems from graph theory. So let us start with uh, looking at what are graphs. So for the time being, we will define uh, what we uh, call simple graphs uh, and we will just call it as a graph. So for the time being, when I say graph, what I mean is a simple graph. And what is a simple graph? A graph is a pair of sets, let's say uh, G equal to V and E, where the uh, elements of uh, the set V are called vertices. So this could be a set of objects. And uh, the set E is a set of two element subsets of B. So the elements of E are called edges. So for our, uh, our purposes, a graph is uh, this, that you have a, a set uh, V whose elements we call vertices, and a set E uh, of, uh, let's say, binary relations or a set of two element subsets of V which uh, we call the edges. Now, let us look at uh, some examples. We start with the uh, one simple example where you have uh, four uh, elements in the vertex set V, which we call A, B, C, and D. Now, the edge set uh, is two element, you know, set of two element subsets of uh, V. And uh, here we define E to be set uh, A comma C, A comma D, and B comma D. Okay. So these are the three two element subsets which form the edges of the graph. Another example I give, uh, let us say V is uh, Z, which is a set of all integers. And uh, two elements A and B uh, belong to the edges if and only if their difference is one. Now, in this case, uh, it happens that the vertex set uh, is uh, not finite. Okay. Let us look at one more example. We look at uh, the set V uh, as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, in this uh, uh, graph, let me define uh, edges as the set uh, i comma j when uh, the difference between i and j is actually equal to two. So whenever the uh, difference between the two numbers is equal to two, then we say that there is uh, an edge between them. So these are examples of uh, examples of graph or simple graphs. 
Now, a graph, uh, you know, a G is said to be finite if the vertex set and edge set are finite. Uh, since we are looking at simple graphs, once the vertex set is finite, we will also uh, have the edge set to be finite. So for our purposes, a graph is finite if uh, the vertex set V is finite. Now the, the cardinality of the vertex set uh, is called the order of the graph, which is the number of vertices in the graph. Now, uh, what we usually use to denote the order of the graph is, uh, you know, uh, G within, uh, you know, the graph name uh, within two uh, horizontal bars and uh, uh, which is uh, the, uh, called the order of the graph. Now, the size of the graph, on the other hand, uh, is the number of edges of the graph, which is denoted by the symbol norm, norm of G or, uh, you know, the size of G. It is not the norm. Uh, in this context, we will use it as size. So the size of the graph is always the number of edges and order of the graph is its uh, number of vertices. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the main advantage of using graphs is the ability to visualize uh, relations. Okay. So, you know, as, as we mentioned, uh, the, the edges are uh, two element subsets and the two elements, uh, you know, the subsets can be thought of as, uh, you know, binary relations. Like, you know, whenever there is a relation between two objects, we can say that there is an edge between them. So this is one of the reasons like, uh, you know, it is applicable in many, many areas. Like, for example, you want to study the transport network, right, of uh, different cities. And uh, you have the cities, you have the connections between the cities, different routes. Now, these routes can be uh, made uh, as edges, right? And if there is a, you know, direct uh, path from, uh, you know, uh, road from uh, a point or city one to city two, then I can say that there is a edge relation between city one and city two. Right? City one comma city two is an edge. Now uh, this uh, can be carried to other other areas like uh, you know when when we are talking about people, the relations between people, or uh, in a computer uh, we can talk about different uh, components and the connections between them, or uh, in a, in, a, in a chip for example, or uh, in 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 web uh, world wide web uh, or uh, social networks then uh, neural networks all these things can be represented as as graphs so this is one of the main reasons why it has a wide range of appli uh, applicability right electrical network now uh, so it will help if we can actually visualize these relations so what we do to visualize is uh, to represent it as uh, as a picture, and how do we do that? So we take your uh, uh, the graph, look at the uh, set of vertices. Now the vertices uh, we will map to distinct points on the plane. For us, for you know, for the time being, we'll assume we'll uh, draw it on the plane. So we will map the vertices to distinct points on the plane. Now. When uh, two uh, points, right, or two vertices uh, are in an edge relation, right, when there is a relation between, when relation between them, which forms an edge, then what we do is that we will draw a line segment or a curve connecting these two points, right, the corresponding points uh, on the uh, plane. Okay, so this will uh, give you a picture, right, of the graph. So let us let us look at an example uh, to see uh, what uh, we mean. So here I have the graph uh, with the vertex at V equal to A, B, C, D, E, and F, and uh, the edge set. So this is the vertex set A, B, C, D, E, and F. Right. Then we have the edge set E is equal to set A, B. Then uh, set uh, B comma C 
set a comma d set uh, c comma e set b comma f and set e comma f there is a comma missing okay so we have we have this uh, uh, edges now what we have done here is to map these points a b c d e and f to different points on the plane r2 right for example a is mapped to some point here b is mapped to some point here c is mapped to another point right d is mapped to a point e and f so all these points are mapped to uh, all these vertices are mapped to distinct points on the plane and now since a b is an edge right a comma b is an edge i i draw uh, a line segment connecting a and b right this way. similarly uh, since uh, uh, b comma c is an edge right i have uh, this uh, connection Then I continue. I I have uh, a comma d, so I add a line uh, joining a and d, right? Then I have uh, c comma e, so c and e I will connect. B and f I will connect, and similarly e and f I will connect. So then I will get uh, you know a picture, right? So this is the picture that we got. Now, this picture tells you many things about the relation that we may not immediately see from uh, looking at the description, right? The set theoretic description. So, uh, if you look at this uh, this uh, graph, for example, right, you will see there is some kind of uh, you know uh, a closed uh, uh, cycle here. We will we will define these things formally, right? Uh, a closed uh, uh, you know like walk here, where right? you can find right b to f, f to e, e to c, and c to b, right? It's immediately clear from the picture, right? Here you need to find it out. Uh, by you know by going through each one and then see which one forms a cycle in the picture it is immediately clear what forms a cycle what does not form cycle and things like that. so uh, this is one of the uh, main advantages of using uh, graphs right one can one can visualize many relations we will see many other uh, uh, examples and then uh, how it helps the visualization helps uh, in the due course of uh, uh, our, our lectures. Now, we will uh, necessarily, uh, necessarily have to define a, a few terms so that we will be able to look at uh, more advanced stuff. So let us start with some, uh, some definitions. So let uh, G equal to V comma E be a graph. Okay, so we start with this assumption. And uh, you have a vertex, uh, let's say small letter v, uh, uh, in the in the vertex at v. Now uh, let me call by uh, uh, small letter e uh, as the you know, name for an edge, right? So we know that e is basically a two-element subset, right? We denote it by some name e, uh, and uh, uh, that's it. Now we say that the vertex v is incident with the edge e if uh, v is an element of e right so what i what i mean is that uh, so if you, if you look at this graph a b is an edge right a is a vertex which is part of the edge a comma b right so a comma b is an edge and uh, because it is a two element set i can talk about the vertex a being an an element of uh, the two elements at a comma b right so a is now an element of the edge so the vertex is an element of the edge so if that happens i say that the vertex v is incident with the edge e now if uh, the edge e equal to let's say u comma v then we call uh, u and v to be the endpoints of the edge e so endpoints of E are the uh, two vertices uh, in that uh, uh, in that edge. Now uh, you know the the names right like you know endpoints, uh, incidence, uh, vertex, 
uh, all all these things come uh, from the you know the pictorial uh, representation for example it, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, the representation of the graph you will see that you know the ab is a you know a line segment or a curve right uh, in the pictorial representation and a and b are basically the you know the points right points a and b correspond to the vertices a and b right uh, so the points are basically the end points of this curve right the curve starts at a point uh, let's say a and ends at a point b right so this is the reason why we call these as end points and why it's called incidence right because one can see the incidence of uh, the point of the uh, line segment. So these are these are geometric conditions. Now uh, we say that uh, two vertices U and V uh, are adjacent uh, in the, in the graph D uh, if uh, uh, U and V form an edge. Right. So if there is an edge connecting U and V, then we say the vertices U and V are adjacent or uh, they are neighbors. I can say that u is a neighbor of v or v is a neighbor of u, etc. So we uh, often write, uh, you know, the edge uh, uh, you know, u comma v, uh, you know, like uh, in the graph, right? For example, u comma v is a, a two-element uh, subset. Uh, let's say that there is an edge, right? That is one of the edges of the graph. Then uh, to save uh, you know space and writing, uh, we often use the shortcut uh, just uh, uv without any space. Right. So uv, if I write in the you know in our usual context, if I write uv, then uh, uh, u and v stand for vertices, and uv is an edge automatically. So unless I uh, state other ways, we will use this uh, notation. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes we will have to change the notation depending on uh, you know the type of the names that we use, or in some context, we cannot use this uh, notation. We will use the standard notation u comma v or some other uh, notations. In that time, we will mention it explicitly. Okay. So for the time being, let us uh, assume that when I write uh, uv uh, in E, that means that uh, uh, uv is an edge. Now, we say that two edges are uh, adjacent, right? Uh, two distinct edges are said to be adjacent if they have non empty intersection. So, since the edges are distinct, uh, we say that they are adjacent if they have at least a common, common vertex. Now, uh, a graph, right, for, for our purpose, uh, since the graphs are simple, uh, we will always have the intersection to be either, uh, you know, if they are not adjacent, uh, then the intersection is empty, or otherwise uh, it will have exactly one element. But when we talk about other type of graphs, not necessarily simple graphs, we will also come across uh, the cases where uh, the, you know, the endpoints of the two uh, edges could be the same. Uh, that uh, we will not discuss uh, in this course. Okay. Now, when you have a graph where uh, you know you have a vertex set, and any two vertices are adjacent in this graph, let's say, right? So if if any possible pair, every pair uh, of uh, uh, vertices are adjacent, then we say the graph to be a complete graph. Okay. So if there is an n vertex graph in which all the uh, edges are present, right? All all pairs of uh, uh, vertices form an edge. Then we say the graph uh, to be complete because we cannot have any more edges, right? We, we need to select any two element subset and then decide whether it to be an edge. But if we select all uh, two element subsets, then we cannot add anything further. So therefore, this we call as a complete graph, and we uh, usually denote it by the uh, By the uh, letter K subscript in. Right? This is the symbol that we use. Now here are some examples of uh, complete graphs. So you have, uh, you know, the first one is uh, K1, which is a one vertex graph, and uh, there are no edges because uh, there is only one vertex. 
So you have this one, right? And you have the one vertex complete graph. Then you have the two, uh, uh, oh, well, three vertex uh, graph, let's say K3, uh, where you have the three possible uh, edges, right? And uh, yeah, here it is, right? Then you have a four uh, vertex complete graph where you have uh, all the four vertices, and then I mean, you know, you have all possible six uh, edges, right? Four choose two, right? So the two element subsets are there are four vertices, therefore four, four choose two uh, edges will be there. So you have all the four choose two edges uh, in the graph K4. You have a two element uh, uh, vertex set and then you have a complete graph on, uh, on two vertices, that is K2. Right? So these are examples of complete graphs. Now, again, let G uh, equal to V comma E be a graph. We look at a subset of vertices, let's say S, and we say that uh, this set is an independent set in the graph. If between this subset of vertices, there is no edge present. Okay? So for any two elements in this subset, they uh, don't form an edge in the graph D, right? So then we say this subset is an independent set in the graph G. Now, let us look at an example for independent set. So here is, here is a graph, okay? Here is this graph. And uh, in this graph, uh, what I'm going to do is to pick uh, some vertices, right? A subset of vertices, let's say. So I, I, I pick, let's say, one. Now, once I pick one, since I want the subset to be independent, I will not be able to pick, let's say, two or four, because two is adjacent to one, four is also adjacent to one. So if one is already there, I cannot pick two or four if I want the subset to be independent. But then I have the choice of either six, three, or five, right? One of these three I can. Suppose I choose three. Now if I choose three, then I can uh, say that one, three is uh, an independent set, right? Of course, one itself is an independent set. One, three is an independent set. Now uh, I can see, okay, can I add any more vertices to the independent? So I see that, okay, 5 is adjacent to 3, I cannot add 5, uh, but 6 is not adjacent to 1 or 3, so I can add 6. So I selected these 3, and I got a, uh, an independent set of size 3 in this graph. So I have, I have a subset, let's 1, uh, 3, and 6, which is a subset of the vertex set, and this is an independent set in the graph. I can talk about other independent sets. Like maybe I started with five. Now once I choose five, I won't be able to choose three or six. Now I can pick uh, maybe two, right? Or four or one. Let me say that I picked one, right? So then one comma five is an independent set, right? Now once I pick one, I cannot add four or two, so I cannot add any more, right? So I have a two element independent set, uh, 1 comma 5, I have a 3 element independent set, 1, 3, 6. Similarly, I can find other independent sets. Now, let me uh, define another uh, uh, subgraph, uh, what we call subgraph. So let us say that we have a graph uh, G and uh, you have a graph H. Okay, so H is a graph on the vertex set V dash and uh, with the edge set E dash. So V dash E dash is an edge, uh, is a graph. 
let us say called uh, we call uh, this graph of h now we say that this graph h uh, is a subgraph of the graph g equal to v comma e if uh, v dash is uh, a subset of v and uh, e dash is a subset of e so a graph h is a subgraph of g if v dash is a subset of v and e dash is a subset of e Okay, so this is very important. We will come across the independent sets and subgraph uh, quite often. So let us look at some examples. So here is an example. Let us say uh, G is the graph uh, V comma E, where V is the uh, set one, two, three, four. And uh, E is the set uh, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. Now I have uh, uh, H is the graph V dash E dash, where V dash is the set 1, 3, 4, and uh, E dash is the set 1, 3, and 3, 4. Now H uh, uh, is a subgraph of G because uh, we can see that 1, 3, 4 is a sub, you know, V dash, which is 1, 3, 4, is a subset of 1, 2, 3, 4. And E dash uh, is uh, a subset of uh, uh, E, which is uh, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4, right? So E dash is 1, 3, and 3, 4. So therefore, uh, the, uh, the graph H on uh, 1, 3, 4, and uh, uh, with that set 1, 3, and 3, 4 is a subgraph of the graph G. Now, in this, uh, I can look at another uh, subgraph. For example, uh, our independent set, right, uh, was a subgraph, right? There is no edge, but it is a subgraph. The edge set is the empty set, right, which is a sub subset of uh, the, uh, the edge set anyway. Now, uh, if you look at this graph, you can clearly see uh, many of its subgraph, right? Immediately, right? For example, I can just look at the, you know, uh, the graph formed by uh, one, two, and uh, three, right? Which is a, which is a subgraph, of course, right? Right. So the vertex set is a subset, edge set is a subset, and therefore I see a subgraph clearly, right? Similarly, uh, I can say that, okay, I can add more, right? I can add maybe, right, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 6. So I have a subgraph on 1, 2, 3, and 6. Similarly, I can see other subgraphs, right? For example, I, I, I may choose 4, then I select 5, then I select 6, I select 1, then I choose the edges 5 and 6 only. So now in this case, for example, we have uh, 1, 4, uh, 5, 6, the vertices as a sub subset, and then the edge uh, 5, 6 is a subset. So therefore, it's a subgraph of the graph. Now let us look at another example. I have the graph G. Uh, equal to V E, where uh, uh, V is the set A, B, C, D, E, F, and E is the set A, B, A, C, A, E, D, E, C, E, and E, F, okay? So, uh, I have this uh, 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 graph G, then I have uh, the graph H, uh, uh, let's say, right? Uh, with the vertex set V dash, which is A, C, E, F, and uh, E dash, A, B, D, E, and D, F. Now, clearly, you can see that uh, V dash is a subset of uh, V, because A, C, E, F is a subset of A, B, C, D, E, F, and E dash is a subset of uh, E, which is uh, A, B, D, E, and D, F is a subset of A, B, uh, A, C, A, E, D, E, C, E, and E, F. Now, uh, a, B, D, E, and E, F, right? 
So therefore, I, I see that V dash is a subset of V and E dash is a subset of V. But now, my I claim that uh, H is not a uh, subgraph of uh, G. Now, uh, why is this? If you have been careful, you should have already uh, noticed it. It is because uh, our definition of the subgraph says that uh, H is a subgraph of G, right? Uh, what was our definition? Let us see. Right? A graph H uh, equal to V dash E dot is a subgraph of G if V dot subset of V and E dot subset of V. Now, what is the definition of a graph? We said that a graph is having uh, a set uh, V as the set of vertices and uh, a set E, which is which are two element subsets of the set V. Right? Then we say it's a uh, graph. Now, what we have here, for example, in this example, is V dash is a A C E F, right? And uh, E dash is A B D E and E F. But D is not a vertex of uh, V dash, right? So since D is not a vertex of V dash, D E cannot be an edge in the graph uh, with the vertex at V dash. So therefore, H equal to V dash E dash is not a graph. So since uh, H is not a graph, it is not a subgraph because our definition says that H is a subgraph uh, graph first and then only it can be a subgraph. So uh, it is not uh, just uh, sufficient to have a subset of vertices and subset of edges, but we should also make sure that the, uh, the edges are using only the vertices uh, of the uh, subgraph that we are looking at. Okay. Now, a subgraph uh, of, uh, you know, subgraph, let's say, H of a graph G is said to be uh, an induced subgraph if for every, let's say, uh, pair of vertices X and Y in H, the edge XY belongs to the graph H if and only if the uh, edge xy is uh, an edge in uh, the graph G. So whenever the edge is present in the graph G, I will add it to the graph X. Of course, only between the vertices of X, right? So the vertex set is a proper, uh, not necessarily proper, it, is, it could be uh, any, any subset of the vertex set. Then, but the edges uh, for an induced subgraph, uh, we cannot uh, choose the edges. We, the, the edges come automatically uh, from the graph G. All the edges which are present in uh, between these vertices will automatically come here. Okay. To see an example, let us look at uh, the graph G here, right? Uh, with uh, vertex at 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, I select a subgraph I mean, uh, with the vertex set, let's say 1, 2, 4, and 6. So I select 1, 2, 4, and 6. 1, 2, 4, and 6. Now, if since I am looking at induced subgraph, right? So uh, looking at induced subgraph, the edges will come directly from G itself, right? So since uh, I look at this uh, vertices, I, I let's say uh, mark one here as vertex one, and then I, I take two. Then I have four and six. But now I, I notice that there is no edge connecting one to any other vertices uh, two, four, or six. So therefore, that edges are obviously not there. Then uh, two. Uh, 4, there is an edge, so I select 2, 4. 4, 6, there is an edge, therefore I also choose uh, 4, 6, right? Those edges will come. I cannot say that, okay, uh, I don't want uh, the edge 2, 4, because if I don't choose edge 2, two 4, then what I get is not an induced subgraph, it is just a subgraph. It is a subgraph, but it is not an induced subgraph. So this one is a subgraph of the graph G, Right, but it is not an induced subgraph. On the other hand, if I add 
uh, all the edges that are present in G between these vertices, then it is an inducible graph. And I can I can denote uh, this fact that I am looking at induced subgraph by writing the graph within square bracket the subset of vertices that we are looking at because that is clearly now defined right what are the edges so therefore I can just write the vertex set and uh, say that okay this is the subgraph induced subgraph that I am looking at So here are some uh, 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 more examples, right? So you have uh, the graph G, the graph H and H dash are uh, uh, subgraphs of uh, the graph G, right? So H is a subgraph because we can see clearly that uh, the vertex set is a subset. If I want, I can also name it, right? Let's say this is one, five, right? Now, uh, with this, uh, one can see that, of course, uh, H is a subgraph of, uh, uh, of the graph G. H dash is also a subgraph of the graph G. On the other hand, H is an induced subgraph because if I select all the vertices 1, 2, 3, and 4, all the edges between those vertices in the graph G are present in H. On the other hand, H dash is not an induced subgraph because H dash has all the five vertices. But then it should have all the edges between them also, right? For example, 3, 5 is an edge in the graph, but 3 and 5 are vertices here, but 3, 5 is not an edge. So therefore, H, e, H dash is not an inducer graph, right? So this is what uh, one should be clear about. Okay, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, continue uh, with the uh, topics uh, in the next class.